<laughs> a good old Dinah. May not be the prettiest, but she's old reliable. Call her up on a Thursday, be like, yep, meet you in a half hour. <laughs> We're doing an FXRP fairing on an old style Dinah. Are you sure? No, I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> So we had talked about getting a dyna because we were making an uh, FXRP fitment for the older dynas. So we thought we might as well pick one up ourselves. It's an 03, so it's an anniversary edition. You can pick up these bikes for anywhere from three to 5,000. The cool thing about it is it's a cheaper bike. It's still a big enough bike to still have fun on, but you can make it your own without breaking the bank. We're gonna be doing an FXRP install on this and this particular fitment goes from 91 up to 05. So if you're within that range, this kit's for you. What we want to show you is how a stock Dyna can go from being, uh, it's another Dyna to that thing looks cool. So stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. So when you open up your box, you're going to find a couple different things. This is going to be the most important thing you're looking for for step number one. You want to verify that you have all of your parts that are called out for in the box. What happens if I get my kit and I'm missing some parts? In that case, please reach out to us. Uh, we will do anything that we can to get you the parts that you need in a reasonable amount of time. Once you have verified you have all the parts, we're going to disconnect the battery. Step number one, fender cover. I'll do it. Sorry. If you don't have a fender cover or tank cover, you're going to want to put some kind of cloth, towel, fabric of some kind that's going to protect your paint. Uh, especially with this one, it's the anniversary edition, so we definitely don't want to mess that up. Now that we have the fender cover on and the gas tank cover, we're going to disconnect the battery. When disconnecting the battery, we're going to disconnect the negative cable. Now what? Okay, now that the battery is disconnected, our next step is we are going to remove the headlight mount and depin the headlight. And inside here, th this is what your uh, headlight clip looks like. So for those of you who don't know, the left side is ground, the top is low, and the right side is high beam. So Danny will come over here and she'll show you how to depin these. All right, so I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick it up, but in where these square parts are on each one, there's a little metal tab that hangs over. You're just going to want to push that inward towards the terminal itself, and then it'll pull out. So then to remove the headlight housing, you need a quarter inch Allen, and you'll take out the two bolts over that brow piece there. If you'd like, I can hold your hardware. I've got my pockets, but thank you. Okay. You got some shine marks? So what she's doing right now is there's a grommet that holds those wires into the headlight bucket. Uh, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze to get it in and out. Okay, now that we have our headlight off, uh, I would say our next step would be to grab our lower bracket, our lower support bracket, which is this little guy right here. And we'll be using bag G and we'll be installing that. And that will go right here. And what you'll notice is when Danny puts this together, just to make sure that all of our pieces and parts go together without any binding, she's not actually going to tighten that down all the way. She's going to leave it just a little bit loose. For our next step, we're going to be installing this cool neck bracket here, but look at that. Oh man, that's nice. You see that? Danny's going to be putting some tape on this lower tree due to the fact that these arms here will actually be going down like this and sometimes we can't always prevent a scratch. So we try and do what we can to keep everything nice. So watch the way she snakes that in there. It'll really aid, aid you guys at home and 
getting this on. The ears on your neck bracket will be on the outside of the tabs of the fuel tank. Oh my. Cable's not in a really convenient spot. So now that Danny has all the bolts for the neck bracket and the lower support on, uh, this would be a safe time to go ahead and crank that neck bracket and that lower support down just due to the fact that there are multiple mounting points, so everything will be centered and ready to go. And it will make your installation process a lot easier when the fairing goes on. Okay, next step is we're going to be doing the fairing and the fairing adapter plate. So what I'll do is I'll try and help Danny by holding the fairing so she can get this bolted. Um, it can be done with one person, but it definitely helps to have a friend handy who can help you. Can I tell him about the tab? And then with this adapter plate that Danny has, you'll notice that there's there's a tab on the, on the bottom of it. It's a little indexing tab. You want to make sure that that's lined up at the bottom of the fairing. Right there. The reason being is... Uh, this is a directional piece, so if you don't get it lined up the first time, the rest of it's not going to go together. That's why we use a fender cover. <sighs> Next step is going to be our mustache bar. So this, you'll be using contents of bag E. Uh, that will be the 516th hardware, or sorry, Quarter inch hardware, my bad. One thing that you want to pay attention to is how Danny puts his mustache bar in as it will make it a lot easier for you at home to do the install. Uh, she has a nice little fancy trick that she does to make it really easy. Should we have had this bolt to stay out then? What's that? It goes into that bolt? It does. It does. I know, I'm saying, should we have left that bolt? It's right now, it's tight. Should we have left that out? I fucked up. I fucked up. For those of you at home, we're actually going to be removing this bolt. Uh, that was my fault because the mustache bar uses that as a locator. Would you just look at it? Would you look at it? <laughs> look at it. Hey, check this out. Check this out. Would you just look at it? There's a height limit. <laughs> look at this. Are we paying attention? Watch, watch. Notice how we're all kneeling. Notice how we have an airlift and it's on the ground. Well, we, we were short people, smarter here. Short people can't reach up here. <laughs> we, like, we like to be flexible. Okay, so back to the install. This is the important part that you guys at home want to watch. You all see this clutch cable right here? You see this clamp right here? We're going to stick a screwdriver, flat blade, right up in there. We're going to pop that lock, pop this tab, yank this out of here so we can get that uh, mustache bar up in there. I was just making it funny for the video, you know. Yeah. Now notice how she put that mustache bar in. The reason I say that is because you want to make sure that that tab on that mustache bar lines up with the frame tubes. If that angle is not right, your mustache bar is not right and it will not bolt up because the pads on, on the mustache bar will be facing up like this. So you'll know if you have it in there backwards. Make sure that the, the tab of the mustache bar lines up with the angle of the down tubes. Once she has her bolts in for the lower fairing support, uh, that's when we can go ahead and uh, center our fairing, and then we will tighten up our lower fairing support, our mustache bar mounting bolt, and our four fairing Mount bolts will all be tight and then we'll move on to the next step. Because what about So Danny had a good point. Uh, when you're going to tighten down your hardware, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you always want to make sure, just so you have a, draw, a surface that's drawn up evenly, you want to alternate your bolts that you're tightening. You don't want to tighten all on one side and then on another one that can cause binding. 
So make sure that we're alternating those bolts as we're tightening. Okay, uh, while she is tightening these bolts down, uh, we'll go over some torque specs with you guys. We'll start from the top. Our lower support bracket, this piece down here, we're gonna tighten that bolt to 18 foot-pounds. Our neck bracket, hardware, we're gonna, oops, sorry, our neck bracket hardware, which is the tank in your lower bolt, we're gonna tighten that to 13 foot-pounds. Our lower mustache bar hardware, we're gonna tighten those to 45 inch-pounds. And then our fairing, to neck bracket, we're going to tighten that to 18 foot pounds. If you missed any of that, refer to your instructions. We just took this $3,500 bike, turning it into a $10,000 bike, just with a little bit of soap and a fairing. The fairing kits are going to be retailing for $19.99.95. They come with a nine inch dark smoke. FXRP windshield and all the hardware. Make sure always, whenever you're installing a new part, test fit the part first, then have it painted. We need crash bars. Not them factory ones, them, them cool ones. The straight bar ones. The straight bar ones. Then you would be a diner bro. Now, we will be taking the headlight ring mount, which is AKA our spring bucket. And we will be installing that. This too, just like our adapter plate, this is directional. So what you wanna look for is this little tab here with that, this little tab here with that Phillips head screw. That is the bottom. Make sure that's on the bottom. All your mounting holes will then line up, goes together like a cinch. When installing this, uh, this headlight ring mount. Uh, make sure that for those four bolts, you use just a dab. I'm talking one drop of Loctite. Uh, there's a lot going on up there, not only with the vibration of the bike, but also with that spring bucket. We would hate to see those screws to start backing out on you and have the headlight fall inside your uh, headlight cover. So drop a Loctite. Fade into the mist. Okay, now that we got uh, our headlight ring mount installed, we're gonna go to our next step, which is going to be our windshield. As you can see, Danny already has the well nuts installed into the fairing. Down there, just cause short people problems. You gotta go up and down and up and down. So now Danny's gonna be installing our nine inch dark smoke FXRP windshield, um, which will be coming in all of the kits. That will be the standard windshield. They are polycarbonate. Uh, with that being said, you need to make sure that you are very careful when you mount your windshield. It does not take a lot to hold this windshield down. We use well nuts. Those are rubber inserts that have a, a brass sleeve inside of them. When you tighten that up, that rubber crushes down. So with that being said, we're only tightening these screws to 10 inch pounds, one zero inch pounds. Please be careful not to over tighten because if you do, as you notice how Danny's tightening this, if you over tighten these windshields, you will develop a crack right next to the screw or right next to the washer. We don't want that, so 10 inch pounds. Just in case you didn't hear, 10 inch pounds. Hey, how, how many inch pounds is this? Uh, 10, that would be a one zero. Now, we're going to install our headlight. To do so, we'll be removing three Phillips head screws from our headlight trim ring. Danny can show you where those are at. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're getting the right screws. If you get the wrong one, you'll actually be taking out one of your spring bucket adjuster screws. So don't take out which Don't take out the adjuster screws. The Allens, pretty much just keep a Phillips head in your hands and you'll be fine. There you go, making it easy. So just like before, with the headlight, um, if you're looking at it from the back with your connector, 
Our left side is ground, our top is low beam, and our right side is high beam. Okay? Now, one thing that you guys are gonna notice is when we go to try and put this headlight in, our headlight wiring is not gonna fit. Okay, so what we wanted to show you guys, can I hand that to you quick? Mm -hmm. You'll notice that our bars are really low. So if you're getting one of these fairings or you're thinking about getting one of these fairings, make sure that you take into account you need an eight inch riser and you're going to need to relocate your turn signals. So when you get that eight inch riser up, if you peek through and you look at that Road King over here, so this has a different fitment. It's for our Road King application, but we put a set of eight inch risers on there, which gets those bars up and back, allowing you to turn without having any interference with the fairing. And back to Danny, she's installing the headlight. Dun, 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 dun. So just to make sure before you guys commit to a fairing, you know that you need new bars. As she's getting that tightened up, I'm gonna get the next stuff ready. I went ahead and uh, made it a little easier for Danny by putting this trim ring on, this headlight cover. With that being said, very important piece that you guys need to remember is at the bottom of this headlight cover, you'll see two notches. Those notches indicate the bottom of the headlight cover. And what I do is see that seam there? Just to help me remember, I put that seam at the bottom of the lens cover. So I'm going to hand Danny the hardware. That will be from bag A. Want to make sure that she can see clearly now the lens is clean. It's okay, don't tell her. Awesome. So this is a very important piece again here that you'll want to remember. Notice how Danny is putting the screws in. She's putting all four screws in first before she takes a screwdriver to any one of them. Reason being is you have to remember this headlight cover is going into those rubber well nuts. So with that being said, those screws can move. So we wanna make sure that we have proper alignment, get all those in there first, then come back with the screwdriver. And these again, for the headlight cover, we'll be tightening these down to 10 inch pounds. Uh, when you do have your fairing back from paint and you do get it all back together, before you put that headlight cover on, make sure you adjust your headlight. So for those of you at home, uh, if you guys have any questions, please reach out, uh, send us an email, send us a message on social media. I have a question. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing, Ryan? What? Uh, so the fairing looks great. I just I have a, a couple questions. Absolutely. Um, I noticed up front, it looks like that's a, a bigger headlight than it was when we first took the headlight off is, am I going to have to change my headlight? Yes. So in the kit, um, we will not be providing a headlight. Uh, it's not anything against you guys, but there's just so many different options out there. Uh, we didn't want to kind of force you into something you didn't want. So this will take a seven inch headlight for you guys with Dinas. You come with a five and three quarter. You will be moving up to a seven, but the possibilities are endless. So I don't have the funds right now to upgrade my bars. Um, can I keep the stock bars and just relocate my turn signals as long as I do some wire extensions for the headlight? To at least get you started, you will have to get those bars up. Even if you relocate your turn signals, you can get a economical set of risers like we did here. These are from Drag Specialties. They're a set of eight inch. I wanna say these were right around 50 to $100 price range, you can get a decent set of risers and say you don't have the extra funds right now. Well, you can run your stock bars with those risers and then when you're ready, we can awesome. get so it. So won't break the bank? Nope, nope. I like that windshield, but I, I think I need a little bit of a taller one. Is it possible to change that out? Actually, one thing that we might be able to do, now you would wanna reach out and email or call us because I don't make the decisions, but 
if you were interested in a kit, there might be something that we could do where we could maybe throw in a 12 inch instead of the standard nine inch that comes with it. Cool, cool, awesome. Well, I appreciate it. It looks great. I'm, uh, I'm excited to ride it. How much did yeah. you say I can buy it from you for? $19.99.95. The whole bike? The fairing. Oh, dang, I thought you were going to sell me the bike. Perfect. So That's a steal to me, though. Look how it awesome is. it looks. It is. And, um, the other thing with his question with the headlight, uh, we will not be providing turn signals either. Again, that goes back to the same realm of there's so many different options out there that we're going to leave it up to you guys. Awesome. Well, thank you for answering my questions. Absolutely. I uh, can't wait to get you out on this thing, get some miles on and see what you think of it. Thank you, Danny, for installing it. Yeah, good job, Danny. Thank you very much. You're amazing as always. And thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, we can't wait to see you on our next video. But we have no idea what that might be. But uh, click that subscribe button and hit that little bell for all the updates.